Hello and welcome back. Uh, in the last video, I asked you to watch a Flappy Parrot gameplay video uh, to take a look at the movement of the parrot and the barriers and to answer some questions. We're now going to review some of the answers to those questions because we've got to turn what we've learned by watching that directly into the algorithms that we create to make our own version of the Flappy Parrot game. In this first task, we're just going to focus on the parrot. We're not going to worry about the barriers at all, and we'll come back to those uh, later on. So let's dive in and start looking at some of those questions. So the first question was to describe the movement of the parrot and what directions the parrot moves in. Now let's watch a little bit of the gameplay video again. So what direction is that parrot actually moving in on the stage? Um, watch its position on the stage itself. So don't worry about anything else that's moving around it. Watch its position on the stage itself and we'll play it again. And what I hope you realise is that it's actually only moving in the up and down direction on the stage. This is a classic trick in video games, but the parrot is only moving up and down, not left and right. So let's have a look at some examples of how this has been used in classic video games of the past and in also in modern games. Here's Super Mario Brothers from 1985. It's a very similar effect. If you watch in this really old game over 30 years old, hence the uh, slightly dodgy graphics by modern standards. If we put a red block or a red stripe over the top of Mario and play it again, you'll realize that he's always in the same place on the screen in that left-right direction. He only moves up and down. Always behind that stripe, always in the middle of the screen in this case. Even in a modern game like Super Mario Odyssey, which is only a couple of years old, which is a 3D game with very beautiful environments moving around Mario, you'll see that Mario is basically always in the middle of the screen from left to right. He only moves up and down. There are some slight changes in his left and right position just to give a slightly more dynamic feel. But when you watch, you see he's always basically behind that stripe. You'll get the odd little touch where he's not, like when he jumps off here. So he just moves slightly outside it. But he's always basically in the middle of the screen. So going back to Flappy Bird, exactly the same is true. Although it feels like he is moving through the environment, he's always in the same place on the stage. Next question was what key does the player press to control the parrot? What happens when that key is pressed? Hopefully this is that this was a straightforward one to answer, but that when the up arrow key is pressed, as we can see on the screen, when up is pressed, the parrot moves in an upward direction. Um, we get the flapping of the wings, which we'll look at how to create in Scratch later. And we also get that chirp sound, which we'll come back to in a later exercise. What happens to the parrot when the player isn't pressing the key? Now, actually, this question's a little bit misleading, but the basic idea is that the parrot is being pulled down when the player isn't pressing a key. He's being pulled down towards the ground. But what's actually true is that the parrot is being moved down the whole time. It's as if there's gravity in the game. Now, Scratch doesn't understand gravity. We're going to have to create algorithms for uh, modeling or creating our own version of gravity. But throughout the game, the parrot's being pulled down all of the time, even when the up arrow is being pressed. That algorithm is trying to pull the parrot down. It's just that when we're pressing the up arrow, the up movement is greater than that movement down that's coming from our version of gravity inside the game. Um, so when that up arrow is pressed, the parrot is lifted higher, but he's still being pulled down all of the time. Now, this is identical to the way gravity works in the real world. So gravity is pulling everything on Earth down all of the time, even when an object is stood on the ground. Imagine, for example, you were standing on a hill and the hill just disappeared. What would happen? Well, the moment the hill disappeared, you would start to fall to whatever level, whatever surface was below where the hill used to be. If I jump off the ground, the push force that sends me into the air is greater than that force of gravity just for a very short time. So that sends me up into the air, but then gravity, which is pulling me down all the time, will bring me back down to the ground. 
Last question was what happens to the parrot when it hits a barrier? Let's take a look. Now there's actually a few things that happen. We get a spinning motion, we get a falling motion, we get a sound, a sort of a squawk or almost a half scream sound, and then the game ends. So what happens to the parrot when it hits a barrier? Spins, makes a squawk sound and falls to the ground and the game ends. Now what we're going to do now is turn those observations into algorithms in Scratch. We're going to make three algorithms, the first two of them in the session today, and the third one for the parrot will be next week. Let's have a look at all three for now. The first one is that we need to get that constant downward movement happening, and that's the, the modelling, the creation of gravity inside our game. The second one is that when the up arrow is pressed, we need to move the parrot upwards and we also need to flap the wings. And the third one, which we can't create until we've made the barriers, is that when the parrot touches one of the barriers, we're getting the spin to the ground, the squawk sound and the end of the game. So in the next video, we're going to dive straight into Scratch and start building those movement algorithms for the parrot.